everybody, welcome back to the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. I'm here, I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit, and we are here with a winner bracket quarterfinal, the first of four winner bracket quarterfinals. This is a team we saw earlier on today. It's Awake from Thailand up against, well, the team from Malaysia, the other team from Malaysia who we haven't seen yet. We just saw ABC win their first match of the day, but this is Gizmo. They got themselves straight into the winner bracket quarterfinals. They had a buy in the first round, so here they are up against Awake, a team who took down Pacific 2 earlier on into the day. So Thailand up against Malaysia. We're going to see how things unravel here. Awake playing over on the dire side up against Gizmo on the Radiant team. And well, I'm excited guys. Thanks everyone who's tuned into the live stream as well as come down here in Singapore to check out the live event. It's been fantastic so far. Plenty more action to come. We've got four full days of Dota 2 action here at the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. Some of the best upcoming teams in Southeast Asia flowing in from Vietnam, from Indonesia, from Sri Lanka, from Singapore, well, I, flowing in from Singapore, I probably just walk, walked across, but um, we are here remaining. with plenty of good action, Dota 2 action at that, over the next three, four days. Five so, without remaining. much further ado, let's hop ourselves well properly into this game. We've got ourselves a Keeper of the Light first pick coming out for Awake. They're playing over on that dire side, as mentioned, they do have the first pick. Banning out the Wisp as well as Nyx Assassin. Over on the Radiant side, the Gizmo team, well, they've banned out Batrider as well as the Lifestealer. And they grabbed themselves Shadow Demon and Magnus. We saw the Mag last game in the hands of ABC, played by Wang Wang in the middle lane, having a fantastic impact on that game. But it comes at the cost of giving away a Keeper of the Light, a hero who can be so, so influential, and something which is a bit of a risk to give away. They're going to combine that with a Rubik now, and right off the bat, Awake grabbed the Phantom Lancer. Oh... It's been a while since I've seen a Phantom Lancer game, but that doesn't mean I want to see another one. PL Coddle, and then you've got the Rubik to round off that tri lane. What a Gizmo going to pick up to deal with this? We're probably looking at them getting some sort of carry here. Lifesteal has been banned out. Maybe we go towards the Gyrocopter, though, as sort of the, the flat cannon to deal with the PL Illusion Army. Either way, it's tough to deal with. And this third pick now, we're going to have to wait and see what they want to get. Maybe a Faceless Void. Faces Void as a carry hero does do decently there. Five seconds you can run in the safe lane, get some decent early game farm, and then look to make up for it elsewhere. But right now, we also have to be careful of your gizmo. You can't give away too many spells with a Rubik to steal. You've already got the mag RP on the playing field. You don't want to give him too much more. Otherwise, he'll just be like a little kid in the candy store, just steals whatever he wants. Just grab, grab, grab. And this is going to be a game where Rubik really looks to take some of those big key spells. Gizmo decided to go for a Nature's Prophet, though, so... Not going straight for any sort of a carry, not going straight for another support, but it's... Well, I, I, it could be one of their supports in the sense you could send the Nature's Prophet into the jungle. Alternatively, you send it to the offline. You run it as that side lane solo. So, a couple of different ways that Gizmo can look to play this, but a very early Nature's Prophet pick, however you look at it. And not exactly a hero that's particularly good at dealing with Phantom Lancer. That's where it's a bit of a surprise pick. It does give you some split push, but PL is the king of split push. Maybe it can give you some focus fight. Get, get, go for that sort of DPS style Nature's Prophet. Get yourself up an Orchid. But finding the real PL is always going to be a huge, huge challenge. And that's half the battle. Finding the real one, then you can focus it down. We saw earlier on today a Batrider just deal so well against the PL. Because he just got himself an early gem and just killed PL whenever possible. That was actually the earlier game. We're awake. We're up against the, uh, the Filipino team. Pacific 2. Pacific 2 picked up the PL Coddle themselves, but... PL just kept getting ganked out by a Batrider. This time around, there's no Batrider on the playing field. No Lifestealer as well, so a couple of heroes who do deal okay with a PL being banned out, and that does leave Gizmo with fewer options as far as what they want to go for as a carry. And those options are going to become fewer and fewer here as we see this second stage of bans. anti mage as a carry gets banned out, then maybe we look towards heroes like Faceless Void, Gyrocopter game banned out as well. And then suddenly, if you're Gizmo, you're like, well, crap, we've got no carry heroes left to pick. They banned out all the best ones to deal with the PL. Maybe Gizmo go look to sort of go all in with something like an early to mid game push. That's their other option. Don't let it get to late game where PL can just be such a big deadly threat. Take the game to Gizmo earlier. And it looks like Awake aren't too worried about the early push because they're banning out carries. Bounty Hunter ban, Anti Mage ban. They're not worried whatsoever about this early game push. And well, with good, you've got to keep it with the light. Illuminate, you've even got a Fade Bolt coming out from a Rubik. The early game push is not going to be as dangerous as it could otherwise be. Shadow Fiend going to be the fourth band coming out from Gizmo. So worrying about sort of a, a dual core lineup. You have the PL as a carry as well as the Shadow Fiend as a secondary carry. So both those two heroes get banned out. 
as we do come towards our last and final band of this winter bracket quarterfinals. Awake, as mentioned, from Thailand. The only team representing Thailand here in Singapore. Gizmo, one of two Malaysian teams here. We already saw ABC steamroll their way through their first opponent earlier on in the Aleutian, Indonesia. But it's still plenty of time to make up for it. Four days, as mentioned, of action. Today is just the first of four, the first of many. Ten seconds remaining. And we're going to have this conclusion today coming, coming along. I think there's about three more matches today. Three of these quarterfinals will play today. Then the fourth one will get played first thing tomorrow morning. As uh, the last band. It's going to be a clink. So for Awake, they're mostly worried about some of those carry options. They ban out clinks, anti mate and the Bounty Hunter as a strong off laner, but also a hero who, in some people's hands, can be played as a sort of a farming carry as well. Gizmo now, this fifth and final ban. They've got to be careful about what they leave in the pool. It's all about the solo heroes. Awake have their try lane. Rubik, Keeper of the Light, and Phantom Lancer just make, give such a strong try. And they can run the Rubik as a solo mid. It would force them to sort of pick up another support, and maybe they get a support like a Sand King. Something that can give them some AoE sun, round off their lineup well, but for the most, most likely we're looking at a Rubik support. Darkseid is going to be the ban. Can't believe Darkseid actually made it this way, this far through the pool. We definitely expect that to be picked up in the first stage. I didn't actually realize it was still in the, in the ban and pick pool. So, it gets banned out here, and definitely a hero that Awake would have loved to round up their lineup with. Give you some strong sort of stalling abilities, and just be all around annoying. It's actually, they're looking okay late game against a PL because of this Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon basically means you can disrupt PL and make a PL illusion army of your own. So PL, not going to be sort of the end all, save all of, of late game carry strategies. Gizmo do have sort of a, a fail, some, a small fail save. It's not sort of a carry who can go head to head against the PL, but it's a support hero who offers a lot of useful abilities with the Soul Catcher making him a, a, a lot easier to burst down and most importantly, as said, disruption. Create a PL army of your own and you're looking pretty good. Question is, where does the follow-up damage come from? The PL army is great for the mana burn you get from it, but it's not really a huge source of DPS. You need some AoE damage, you need something like a Queen of Pain, ideally something like a hard carry. Look towards something like a Faceless Void, maybe even something like a Luna. Go for that sort of semi-carry type play with a Luna here. Windrunner going to be the next pick for Awake. So the Thai team get themselves a Windrunner and DK. Gizmo going for a hero I have not seen in quite some time. Last time I saw DK I was having some fun playing the tutorial mode, which was recently added in uh, Dota 2. Actually just yesterday, but that's neither here nor there. I haven't actually seen a competitive game in some time. DK, well, we'll see where, how they look to lane him. He's a potential solo mid. Or, or alternatively, you run him as that safe lane farmer. Combo him with a Shadow Demon, you've got the Disruption to set things up. You can follow it up with a DK stun and you get a lot of killing power in that tri lane of theirs. Nature's Prophet can either go to the jungle or the off lane. So a couple different ways for Gizmo to do these lanes. The question is, are they getting any other sort of, sort of source of carry or DPS? Because right now DK is not really a hard carry, not really that strong damage dealing hero. Sure with five or six big items he can, but Early on, with just two or three, he's tanky more than anything. He's that tanky frontline front line hero. Something like a slaughter. Hard to kill, hard to bring down a great initiator, but he's not doing a ton of DPS unless he gets far ahead and then he takes it late game. It's still possible, though. In late game, well, you get the splash damage from the Frost Dragon, not to mention all the armor you're getting from a DK. So, tons of armor, AoE damage. Well, it's a decent way of dealing with a PL. So, maybe they look to do that late game. You're never going to have mana, though. That's the big thing. If you're DK late game against a PL, there's no chance of having any mana if you're fighting him head on. But at some point, you might not need mana to beat him. Oh, I like this last pick. Brewmaster is going to be most likely the solo mid for Awake here. And that's definitely a strong team vibe controlling hero that they can use. Really smart choice coming out from the Brewmaster here. I like what I'm seeing. As uh, the last pick now coming out from Gizmo. We'll have to see what they want to grab here with this. They could go for another support here if they're running the Nature's Prophet in the offlane, or it's Nature's Prophet jungle. Then they need some kind of a solo, either a mid solo with the Mag in the offlane, or an offlane solo with Mag in the mid lane. But really, so many different ways Gizmo can lane this. I mean, even the DK is a hero you often send to the mid lane. If they want to send DK mid, Mag to the offlane, they can run a Shadow Demon plus one lane with Nature's Prophet jungling. So plenty of options for Gizmo here. And that's something which Awake have to be worried about. Well, now they have their answer. Lina is going to be it. So Lina is going to be the other support hero. 
Nature's Prophet, DK and Mac going to fill the three farming roles in respective lanes. DK most likely going to be going towards that mid lane. Sorry, not mid, no, not DK. Mag most likely towards the mid lane, I should say. DK likely want to farm in the safe lane with whatever he can get with the two supports. And Nature's Prophet, generally the offlane hero here. As mentioned in uh, past cast, guys, so if you're just tuning in, this is the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. I'm here in Singapore casting live, which does have come with some restrictions. It means I can't say everything I'd want to. Stuff such as early game laning, early game movement, smokes and stuff have to be kept secret because the players, well, they may hear it, they may catch wind, and nobody wants that. But what we can do is introduce these two teams playing over on the Radiant side from Malaysia. We've got Team Gizmo. Glories playing the Shadow Demon. We've got Lena in the hands of Sean's. Melody playing the Dragon Knight. Magnus being played by Ken Rio. And then finally, on the Nature's Prophet, we've got ZGL. Over on the Dire side, coming all the way from Thailand. It's Team Awake, the only Thai representative here. We've got Yotu Yatu playing the Rubik. PL in the hands of Toy. Keeper of the Light being played by Af. Windrunner being played by Boom Bell, who played a fantastic Batrider earlier today. And then finally, the solo mid brewmaster in the hands of DVA. As uh, we'll have to see how things round up here. Gizmo up against the wake. A winner bracket quarterfinal matchup, as mentioned. The first of, well, four winner bracket quarterfinals. Double elimination bracket here. So if you do lose this match, you are still in. You do drop down to that loser bracket. As well. Win runner. <laughs> He's going to be pretty happy about that little pickup. He needed that mana too. And look what he's going to be doing. I see what's coming. The question is to Gizmo. Whoa. Don't block that. Definitely don't want to block it. So, we'll have a quick look at our lanes as far as what we can see. It is going to be Melody playing the safe lane farming DK. Sean's on the Lena. As well as the Shadow Demon Glories. Most likely want to spend their time protecting the DK, but they'll quickly realize bottom lane is empty where is awake no one on the awake team has revealed themselves at bottom and glory gonna go for a quick d ward sent you ward d ward's in the river so he's revealed himself mid lane we've got the brewmaster up against the mag mag rushing a bottle here brewmaster going for the south shield so two different styles at play two different builds coming out from those two players and oh this is sneaky oh no is this gonna work is this actually gonna work we'll have to wait and see I know what he's up to. The question is, does the mag? It doesn't look like it. Oh no. They're pinging, they're pinging. Neither hero sending anyone to the offline just yet. <laughs> oh. No fun for you, no fun for you. Look at this. And. Unfortunately, I'd love to say more about this, but <laughs> I cannot. It looks like Gizmo caught wind of what was up. Speaking of awake, they're using this little trick here. This will help make sure their offlaner can get some XP, some farm. Over in the middle lane, we do have the mag up against the brewmaster. Bottle is now up for the mag for the Brewmaster. His bottle's still not there yet. He's going to sort of have a bit of a struggling time here against the Mag Shockwave Span until we see the Brewmaster show up. Bottom lane, as well as top lane, it's pretty much uncontested free farm for the two carries. We've got DK farming at the bottom lane, and then the PL farming at top. A bit of a trade-off, but definitely a trade-off that Awake are going to be happy with. They want their PL to get nice and farmed. Both teams opting for the very safe passive lanes. Neither team looking to even send someone to the off lane. Nature's Prophet only rocks up to the top lane now that it's pushed to his tower. Now that's his tower, he feels a bit more confident that he can go here, get a bit of XP and farm. Once it pushes out, he's got to retreat. Keeper of the Light as well as Rubik are a deadly duo. If they come out and gank him, he will die very, very fast. Early boots being picked up to make sure he can sort of stay alive there. As well. Oh, wind ran up. There we go. Nature's Prophet says, hey, what are these illusions doing here? Runs right into some. They'll quickly disappear, but more than anything, Nature's Prophet's... Well, he doesn't have to worry about being thrown on top of a cliff. He's got the teleport to get out of there. 
So far, no, act no action, no aggression coming from either team just yet. Oh, Shadow Demon comes out in front of the tower. Give me a TP in from the Nature's Prophet as well. Will it get cancelled? No, it won't. Gizmo, they want this kill. Crowd is there. DBA will get caught. But it looks like there's going to be a first place from Windrunner onto the Shadow Demon who took too much damage from that tower. Maga is screwed to the high ground here. Awake. Almost bring down the Mag as well. Four heroes from Gizmo. Oh wow, that Nature's Prophet getting down to 14 HP. Clap onto the Lena. Is there enough damage? One more right click. It's going to be enough. Windrunner with a double kill early on. Awake almost catch three. They get three. Triple kill coming out from Boom Bell. What a play from Awake. Three kills in quick succession. They turn around an early level one gank on the mid lane. Shadow Demon came in from a very awkward direction. The problem is he was tanking the tower. When you come in from that direction, you get in the tower range. He took, got down to about half HP. And from there, the wind runner backup was just in such close proximity because of what he was doing here, farming here. That made him so easy to come back up the mid lane. As soon as he sees Shadow Demon, he's there. Power shot finishes off Shadow Demon, and then suddenly the gank gets turned around. 3 0 sweep going the way of Awake in the middle lane. Bottom tower is under attack. As uh, things starting to settle out in some of these other lanes now, DK as well as PL. We can now talk actually a bit more about what's going on as uh, announcements here at the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Finals. But it is PL getting a lot of fun at top lane. 35 CS to the 32 of the DK. And Kenryo, the mag, is not going to be happy about how things have started for him here at mid. Level 5 to the Brewmaster. Well, both level 5 here. Brewmaster, despite getting those kills and assists, it was overall, well, a, a decent trade for a weight. They didn't get the XP, they got the gold, though. It was 3 or 4 heroes splitting the XP, and in fact, I don't think Brewmaster even was in XP range. It was just the Windrunner who got most of that XP, and that Windrunner, level 5 as an offlane Windrunner. He was getting some slow jungle farm here, but now he's really caught up by being in position to get those kills and assists. Three kills going his way. He gets XP for all three of those. Bottom lane, Shadow Demon and Lena just providing some backup and protection for this DK. As uh, it looks like they want to start pressuring down this bottom lane. They quickly realize that's not going to work what happened earlier on at Min. Brewmaster, now it's level 6 as well. So we're looking at a level 6 Brewmaster. He can start getting more active. He wants to rush that Blink Dagger, I imagine. Bottom tower is under attack. As Mag, Ken Rio. Level 6 is in, in the near future, but is there going to be any, anything you can look to do with that? The bottom tier 1 tower is now going to find itself clicking a quick ball as Nature's Prophet actually TP's in for this. Maybe Gizmo look to go for two towers. They've got the DK ultimate form, it gives them the corrosive attack. Makes it a lot easier to, pu to push and bring down these towers quickly. Treads up as well. And it looks like we're seeing a drum of endurance build coming out from this DK with this Robe of the Magi. Also helps solve some of those mana problems of his. Not quite as cost effective as the Soaring, but all in all, it looks like, well, Gizmo, they're going to back things off for the time being. Not looking to get too aggressive here. Oh, look at this DK build. It was something we saw from I saw from Virtues Pro about a week or two ago. Not getting any points in this Breath of Fire. Pure Dragon Blood and Dragon Tail. He's going for this late game carry build. The DK I saw do this went for a fast armor. We'll have to see if that's going to be a similar build out of Melody. Maybe after this drum of endurance of his. But a very unconventional way to play this DK. Oh, Mag. He's caught down the PL at top lane. Skewer, Shockwave, solo kill onto the PL. Ken Rio just assassinates Toy at the top lane. Under the tower with the ultimate and then followed up with the shockwave. Perfectly played gank from Ken Rio. Really smart understanding of his hero's damage potential. Brings down the PL and now they transition to a push. There's no one here defending this top tier one tower for the time being. This creep pull coming out from Yotu is going to make it go down even faster because they don't even have a creep wave to defend it. TP's coming back now. Going to be Windrunner. Yep, Windrunner's there. Boom Bell. Looking to help keep this tier one alive. Phase boots up. As well as 1k gold. This is your offlane Windrunner who abandoned the offlane. As far as, <laughs> as, far as suicide Windrunners go, who abandoned the offlane, this is probably the best I've ever seen one do. Well, things starting to settle down now between the two teams. No more, no more aggressive rotations or ganks just yet. Bit of poking and prodding. Gizmo trying to just harass down this top tier one tower. Quickly realize, hey, BLTP's in. Well, actually, no, PLTP's bottom, but uh, Windrunner TP's in as well as Rubik, and then suddenly they realize they need to back things off. 
Junior owner. Wow. Look at this farm. Eight minutes in and we've got a, already a lot of item progression coming out. Brewmaster at mid taking a lot of damage just from a creep wave here. And this is going to leave this tier 1 tower vulnerable because Brewmaster can't defend this with his HP. Maybe we look at the south being used, but for the most part, this tier 1 tower with the DK Dragon Form taking quite a bit of damage. Bottom lane TL finds himself a, a, an easier lane to potentially farm. With Trangle Boots, his first playable accurate for his Diffusal Blade up. He's got some decent laning potential. Oh, Melody gets clipped by the Illuminate. Trying to avoid it, it looked like, but didn't succeed in doing so. Ken Rio, he's level 8 now, he's redeemed himself for that earlier miss up at mid lane. He's now got himself a kill on the BL and he's starting to get himself some decent farm. Arcane Boots bottle, without a doubt we'll be looking for that Blink Dagger up in the next 2-3 minutes if possible. Melody still without that Drum of Endurance though. We're at 9 minutes in, he's level 7 but not having the farm he'd like to have at this point in the game. So Gizmo, I think after that huge, huge early mishap in the mid lane where they gave away three kills, they've really done a good job of playing a lot, a lot safer, a lot more consistently. Not giving away any more kills since then. Also man managing to do a good job of keeping these towers up, especially this top tier one tower, which they only barely kept alive. And if they can keep pressuring towers like this, Gizmo are going to be looking to sort of claw their way back into this game. Oh, Ken Rio. Blocked by an illusion. He will manage to skew his way out of there. It takes a lot of damage from an Illuminator. And it's going to be Shadow Demon off to the side. He gets caught out. No saving him as uh, Brewmaster disrupted up. He's going to easily get out of there. Keeper of the Light picks up the kill, in fact. Level 6 Keeper of the Light now is up. Has a decent amount of farm up his sleeves. And we're going to see what Gizmo are getting in exchange. It's DK farming at bottom light. Leaders at mid getting some XP and farming. He's got Nature's Profit. He's all about the farm. With this Midas up now, he can start getting XP and farm very, very quickly in his own jungle. Drop the ultimate whenever he's trouble. Oh, Diva. Diva finds the lean at mid lane. Gonna drop the ultimate as well. Possibly gonna look for this DK here. The sun is gonna lead things off here. Is there enough damage? It looks like they're just gonna have to retreat here. Help save the wind runner and then it's a re quick retreat. Another boulder being just tossed onto Melody, but all in all, defensive play coming out from the Brewmaster using that ultimate. He was just looking to make sure he got himself out of danger more than anything there. As now the tier 1 tower at mid, being pressured down. Awake without this Brewmaster ultimate, going to find it very difficult to defend this. Keeper Light illuminates the one thing they've got going for them, but Keeper Light is not there. He's not spamming this off. And the tier 1 tower will go down, or doesn't, almost gets denied. Brewmaster was looking for it, but not going to happen. Nature's probably picks it up. It's being traded for a tier 1 top, though. Phantom Lancer manages to grab that for himself. Meanwhile, mid laner and fight is going to break out. Mag RP hits three. Oh, what a great mag. Ultimate followed by Alina. Laguna Blade finishes off the wind runner. Huge, huge engagement. Perfect RP from the mag. Lena Stun followed up hitting three or four. Wind runner going to buy back right off the bat. And Illuminate going to finish off the DK. Double kill from the Keeper of the Light. Catches out the mag as well. Awake, they strike back. Wind runner buys back. It was a two for two trade. As Windrider gets closer and closer to that four stuff, that buyback will slow it down quite a lot, but end of the day, it's a decent fight for Awake. They get two key heroes in the mag and the DK. Gizmo going to back things off now, realizing that's not a fight they want to be taking. And Awake going to be pretty happy with this position. PL did die once at the top lane, but look at his farm. He is out farming the DK the Nature's Prophet, and by a substantial amount. Not to mention his levels here. His level, I believe he's the highest level in the game. Oh no, he's just behind his own teammate, the Brewmaster. So as far as levels go, this is a very high level PL. Something where we've seen the, the last PL, which, which Awake Burst struggled in. He had decent fun, but he didn't get the levels he needed. He needed all the points in Juxtapose, which this PL already has. Only has the one in Doppelwalk because of the Chakra Magic being there. He doesn't have to have all the mana. 150 mana for a Doppelwalk, no problem the beauty of having that Keeper of the Light there on your own team. DK doing his best to catch up on farm, but he's not going to have to do so too easily. PL is there to stand, and here comes the game coming from the Brewmaster. Blink Dagger's up. Diva doesn't have an ultimate, but he's going to try to bring down Melody anyways. Now the Lance coming in. Rubik going to actually take a fall himself. Keeper of the Light finishes off the DK, and now they move on to the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and it's PL who picks up the kill as well. 
Further in the back line, Sean will get caught out. Awake find themselves three kills in that fight and immediately retreat to defend the top lane. Boom Bell not going to give anything up. Nature's Prophet, whoa, Shadow Blade. Going for a cheeky little build here with this Shadow Amulet. Also trying to sneak in this top tier one tower. As our win round doing a great job of holding this up. Oh, Invis. Can he TP out of this one? Brewmaster is going to come in with a clap. They just want to try to spam him down. Question is, is he still there? Oh, looking for a shackle shot, power shot. Everything being thrown at this little gap here. Little do they know. Little do they know. <laughs> oh, the things I wish I could say. The beauty of land casting. There he is. There's ZGL. And Gizmo, well, they're, they're, they're behind, but not by a huge margin. All they need is a good team fight using a mag ultimate. We saw one earlier on at the mid lane. That the mag ultimate is followed up by a three man Lena stun. As uh, it does look like, well, whoa, Keeper Light tries to push Mag up onto the high ground there to trap him. Not going to happen. There's Mag, Shockwave's now, this Creep Wave, and now going to back things up. Oh, PL. He's come to the party. He wants to get this, this Lena. Is there a stun? Is there enough damage? No, there's not. Mag going to blow an RP, though. He's got no skewer. He's got no way of escaping. Keeper Light Illuminate finishes him off. And this Keeper Light's getting very, very rich. Buckler, Hedris, and that spells a mech coming up very, very soon. Nature's Prophet re-reveals himself at top lane. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Sneaky little Indy's TP earlier on. He's going to find that tier 1 top tower. As, uh, it looks like we have a replay of that last kill coming up bottom lane. The snipe coming out from the Keeper of Light. This is it. I mean, TP out. Sean's actually just manages to TP out in time. Almost was enough damage. Unfortunately for Mag, well, he used an RP. He's already skewered up from the river. He was in the river. He skewered up to get away, and that meant his skewer was on cooldown. He couldn't use it again. It wasn't there, and he got caught out. PL cut him off. PL basically cut the distance coming through over here, and now we see a tier 1 bottom tower going down. Awake? Well, PL, get that tower. You want that tower. More gold for you. And TVA, he's like, I'll, I'll take it if you don't want it. No, PL's going to get it. Toy now gets his GPM up even higher. Leading the CS, and well, but definitely leading the GPM. His net worth is... On top at the moment. Not by a huge margin though. Nature's Prophet doing pretty well there with this Midas build. And that's where Gizmo are going to have to look to play this game. In the split push of the Nature's Prophet. DK is well proven to be a very tanky hard to bring down hero. Especially with these early points in the Dragon Blood. And now. There's the item we've been waiting for for Gizmo. This is going to be the one big thing which can sort of look to set them up with a big team fight. Question is, do they look for that team fight or do they look to just keep on farming? Because right now, Nature's Prophet spending a lot of time keeping on farming. DBA, he's got the ultimate back up. He's going to go in, blink, clap. Oh, no, this is trouble for Gizmo. They managed to slow down the Brumas ultimate. He does get off afterwards. TB out from the Shadow Demon. Not going to happen. He gets cancelled by the Shackle. And it looks like Glory is going to get brought down. But it's only going to be one loss. That could have gone a whole lot worse for them. Brewmaster was looking for more. He caught two with the clap. But he immediately got disrupted. That slowed down the follow-up primal split. Mag skewers back three. RP catches four. Lena stun absolutely decimates away. Four heroes drop immediately. Buyback from the Keeper of the Light, but I'm not too sure about that one. The chase is now on. They want the PL. He's been dusted up, but looks like they're not going to find him. Keeper of the Light going to start spamming down this lane. Make sure they don't push this tier two tower. But what a fight coming up from Gizmo. Huge mag play, and I mentioned this item here, the Blink Dagger. It's now up, and that caught Awake by surprise. They were not expecting that Blink Skewer into an RP. It's paying dividends for them. At least that one time. They're going to not have the surprise factor going their way in the next fight, but even so, Awake, they I mean, they've got the Brewmaster initiation, but he can get instantly stunned up. For Brewmaster to initiate, he's going to go straight into a Blink Ultimate. If he claps... It could be enough time for Shadow Demon to disrupt, for Lena to stun, or for DK to stun him. So it's very, very risky for a clap and an ultimate. Unless he isolates a support hero on their own. But if he goes into someone like a DK or a Shadow Demon, it's risky, risky business. He 
Shooting with Elijah just going to stand down this mid lane. Something where Awake have not had the best of luck. Pushing down this mid tier 1 tower. They've lost their tier 1 mid tower of their own. Giving up quite a good deal of map control, but unable to take this Gizmo tower at the mid lane. The good news is, well, it's always good news. PL is farming. Farming up a storm. Well, no new, no new items inside, and he's actually fallen behind the Prophet. Prophet going super late game potentially with this build, and you need it. When you've got DK who's fallen behind as far as farm goes, you need to have additional farm coming out on other heroes, like the Nature's Prophet, like the Mag. Mag with the Blink Arcane Boots, going to be looking at his next big item, possibly a refresher of. I have to wait and see where he wants to go with this. As PL hides himself in some trees here, making sure to be as careful and cautious as possible. Lena at bottom, clearing out this creep wave, but for, for Gizmo, well, the big thing is here, wait till you have a mag ultimate to give him a good fight. Oh, Toy, Toy, oh, he's TP'd out. Gizmo almost finding him there with the dust. They were looking for it. Mag had a skewer as well as an RP to cancel that TP, but he managed to fog himself really well. Anyways, guys, it looks like things have died. We're going to catch another look at that mid-team mid fight as uh, it looks like things have quietened down. And uh, this is the mid-team fight. This is where Gizmo finally managed to turn things around in their favor. RP hit four heroes. Instantly destroyed. There was not a thing that Awake could do in that fight. Lena stun followed up the Mag RP. They maximized their stun duration on four separate heroes. All four heroes got brought down before they could cast a spell. Great play from Mag. The blink, the blink skewer was there to basically set up the perfect RP. And now we have Gizmo. Well, they're still slightly behind. Eight kills to 12, but they're in a much better position than they were earlier on. Oh, they found Aff. They want the Keeper of the Light. He's got a mech. He needs to pop it too. The chain stun is not there. Pop your mech. Pop your mech. He does do so. Rubik stole an RP. RP onto the Shadow Demon as well as the, the Nature's Prophet. Brings down Shadow Demon. Here comes the Brewmaster with an ultimate. He's going to stun up the DK. DK, tons of armor. Is it going to be enough to keep him alive though? It looks like it may be just for now. The Brewmaster Primal Split not really doing a whole lot. TP out now coming from the DK. Oh, Telekinesis is there. DK going to take a fall. Make it a two for nothing kill swing. Brewmaster getting both kills for his team and away. Find themselves once again finding these openings. They have one bad team fight, but then they find an opening or two. Basically solidify themselves once again ahead. Now we're going to see PL starting to build that next big item of his. There's a wake. Well, they're going to have to deal with a very fun nature's profit soon. He's got the makings of a, a side of vice here with this ultimate orb. And what Gizmo, well they now know and now can't stop is Aegis being picked up by the PL. Roshan gets destroyed by Awake. And that was really the beauty of those two pickoffs they had in mid lane. They killed the DK and then they go straight into the Roshan pit. Get the Aegis for their Phantom Lance and this is going to be a Heart of Taras coming up on him soon. Also a lot of item progression coming on this Windrunner as well. Four staff phase boots in, well... Something coming out on the career as well for him and his team. Middle tower is under attack. ZGL at bottom lane has this ultimate orb. Level 13 as well, so a lot of levels and finally awake have their way with this mid tier 1 tower. They spent a lot of time chipping away at it, having fights around this mid tier 1 tower. The last one did not go in their favor against the Mag RP, but this time they get it uncontested. And whoa, Mag RP, speaking of one, we'll be seeing two soon. He's got his Oblivion staff up looking for that refresher orb. It's going to be one way of dealing with this Phantom Lance as well as Brewmaster. If you can lock him down with two RPs, you're looking great. The question is, if you don't hit, can you actually hit the PL? Because if you don't, he's going to mana burn you down so, so fast. And if you get mana burned, you're not going to have mana for that second RP. Awake just dividing their heroes around the map. They've got Brewmaster top, PL bottom, and the support's hiding. They could be top backing up the Panda. They could be bottom backing up the PL. It makes it really hard for Gizmo to know where to get, where to move around the map. As a result... They play a lot safer, a lot more passive. DVA's at the top lane, building an Aghanim Scepter of his own. 
He's got just the point boost, but he's got a lot of gold to back that up as well. He's had that point booster for some time, so Agnim Scepter probably going to be up in the next sort of four or five minutes. Maybe even sooner if he has, if he can have his way with getting some decent flash farming going on here. Win around that ultimate orb is there, so we're looking at the sheeps that are coming out on Boom Bell. I mentioned his bat rider early on today being phenomenal, and right now his win runner has had a great impact on this game. PL's had this uh, this Reaver for some time. We'll be looking for a heart of Tarask. Question is, how soon can he get it? And there's your answer. He's almost got it. And once he has that up, then maybe we see a Wake look to really start putting on a lot more pressure, especially with this PL. He can afford to be a lot more aggressive with the split push and everything else. Oh. Nature's property, Shadow Blade's causing some issues. I feel we're going to be looking at maybe a gem being picked up soon by Awake, because having a Shadow Blade just cause them these kind of problems is not an ideal scenario for them. Not to mention they'd love to deny Gizmo of map control that, you, that you, they can look to do with a gem. So we'll probably see a gem being picked up by Awake. Maybe even Gizmo want one of their own. You're up against the PL Doppelwalk as well as, I mean, just having map control at this stage in the game. 25 minutes in can be crucial for either team. Knowing where you can find those smoke pickoffs, knowing where it's safe to farm. Brewmaster is going to quickly realize he may be going somewhere where it's not too safe. Shockwave narrowly misses him, but he's feeling pretty brave right now. Level 14, so just a level 2 ultimate. Agony Scepter not up as well, but he wants to hit that Agony Scepter and then also that level 16 mark, and we'll be looking at a huge, huge source of damage from him. And the push is on at mid lane, with Awake having finished off this Heart of Tarrasque on the Phantom Lancer. They're feeling confident. The one thing they have to worry about is always going to be this fella. Can they find an opening to get off the, that RP that they're hoping for? Nature's Prophet just going for that split pushes top lane. And the T2 tower will take a fall uncontested. So for now it's, well, for Gizmo, it's just what these other towers for, but ooh. Disruption not going to be there. Ooh, need to disrupt himself. Brewmaster drops an ultimate just to finish off the Shadow Demon. They may just transition to a push here. They can't really dive any further. I believe they just want to get this tier 3 Radiant tower at least chip away in it. They may not get it now with this push, but they can at least do some decent damage. Cyclone. Mag gets thrown up in the end. This means no RP. At least for about 10 seconds here. Mag is looking for that opening. But Awake are just splitting themselves up so, so well. You can maybe catch two at most. Catch in between the winner and the PL, but even then... There's the backup, there's the hero scene behind. Pelican's there, Melody gonna go in, stuns Boom Bell. Winrunner goes in, on stuns up. RP catches just two here, it looks like. Winrunner as well as the PL. PL team being enough damage to bring him down. He's just so tanky with that Heart of Tarrasque. Brewmaster's gonna be the first of all, but PL still alive and still kicking. Soul catching gonna make him a lot easier, a lot squishier. First down the PL, problem is he's got an Aegis. His team's all dead, he's left him on his own. Melody, BKB is there, a toy on the run now. People like gonna throw down an Illuminate to try to stall this off. Melody. Needs to be careful. As PL with a level two, no, sorry, level one defusal is actually almost out of per charges here. Something which will be problematic later on in this game, but for the most part, you just want to get that level two defusal up as soon as possible. But a successful defense coming from Gizmo here. They were up against an Aegis PL, but they still managed to come out on top. And as a result, they go back to the split push, send Nature's proper top. And uh, then send a couple heroes mid, a couple into their own neutrals. Now that things are quite off, we'll take another look at that last fight. Let's see exactly what happened here. Brewmaster went in. He doesn't have ultimate at this point, and that means he gets burst down. There's no surviving for him. And PL, well, PL's sort of in, front of in the front line, doing as much damage as possible, but it's the squishy heroes in the back who eventually get focused and brought down. The AoE from the Lena, as well as the Rubik, just brings those, those heroes down so, so fast. Lena finishes them off. Mag gets some kills with the Shockwave, and then we find Gizmo with a 3 for nothing kill, kill swing, as well as getting the Aegis off the PL. And I mentioned gem, there's your gem, Lena has one. Help counter the PL, also help get themselves some map control. We'll just have to see where Melody looks to go for next with this DK. Is that this DK being Drum of Endurance? Possible Assault Caress? Maybe something just like an armlet if you want something a bit cheaper and more cost effective, but... DK's going to need some late game carry items. Can't just be entirely relying on this Nature's Prophet. I say that, but look at how far this Nature's Prophet is. 2k gold, level 16, and he's finished off this side of ice. The pickoff potential is there when you've got this sheep stick up. Windrunner, Boom Bell, back towards the top lane. He wants to finish his sheep stick of his own. 
If he can get that up, these fights will go a lot better for Awake. Mag without a BKB, if he goes skewering in, or even blinks into a sheep, he may be prevented from getting off an RP. And here we go, DPS time from the Nature's Prophet. I like what we're seeing. This is what the transition we had to see eventually. He's got the survivability of the Shadow Blade, the Disable coming from the side of the vice. He just needs some DPS now, and that's going to come from this next item of his. Oh, just some warning shots being thrown at this Brewmaster. Brewmaster, who's finished off an Aghanim Scepter now. And RP catches off two. Lena going to fall over the stun, going to miss all this skewer. And that's going to save the Brewmaster. That skewer just saved the Brewmaster. There was a Laguna, there's defensive disruption being used, but this looks like it could be the end of Lena. No additional follow-up damage. Prophet just trying to basically tear apart these Pandrum's primal split images. The only one left standing is this Earth and a Shackle Shot. Catches two. Oh, Nature's Prophet goes down on the back line. Rubik is there to make sure of it. Laguna Blade finishes off the Rubik. Two for one trade so far. Lena getting very, very low. DK with a BKB. Trying to bring down the Brewmaster. Blinks out in front of his face. I think the evasion kept him alive there. The only reason he could blink was because the previous right click attack missed. If those hits hit, if they don't miss, then suddenly he can't blink. So... Really crucial misses coming out there, helping the Brewmaster stay alive, but... Oh... The communication just wasn't there from Gizmo. The Mag goes in with an ultimate, hits two, but... The skewer backwards basically made Lena's stun miss. They could have brought down the Brewmaster, prevented him from getting up that ultimate, but the stun timing, the burst damage just was not correctly placed. And now 30 minutes in. Gizmo, well, they're behind 13 kills to 16. As uh, they're going to go for a smoke gank. I say that because the PA system here has been turned off because they're doing some they're doing some giveaways, guys. So luckily for you guys on the live stream, it means I can reveal the fact they have smoked up. Melody actually just going to reveal himself here at the bottom lane. He's got 2k gold, and well, for Gizmo, this is this is a tough position to be in. They've got a strong late game team fight. They're going to have a double RP coming up soon, but. They're up against the PL. Always being up against the PL is never fun. The one thing they have going for them is this Nature's Profit farm. If Nature's Profit was not this far, they'd be well behind. But because of how far Nature's Profit is, this game is still somewhat in the balance. Speaking of balance, well, 2.5k in Awake's favor. XP, very, very even. Dead even, in fact. So, Gizmo, it's, they're playing a farming game. Get the mag, his, his refresher. Get the Nature's Prophet here. I imagine MKB. You're going to win an MKB to help bring down this Brewmaster with, with all his evasion. Also help deal with that Drunken Haze. And then from there, they look to sort of take these late game de defensive team fights. If Awake come to push, they're there with a well-placed RP. Two well-placed RPs. Even if one doesn't land, hey, as long as, as long as one of the two does, you're looking pretty good. Awake, maybe at this point, they look to settle down. They look going to say, okay... Gizmo playing ultra defensive, they're waiting for us to push, let's just not push, let's get PL, four or five big items. He's got his heart, he's got his defusal blade, let's get him, his Mantisile, let's get him, his next big item as well. Whether you're looking for something like a crit, assault crest, whatever it may be. And ooh, Roshan is back online. Are we going to be looking at an attempted kill on him in a second here? And whoop, let's quiet on down now. The team can once again hear me. Gizmo, well their bottom lane, well at least two of those here is our Mag and Shadow Demon just trying to clear out, keep the Creep Equilibrium going. Nature's Prophet at top. It's just continuous split push coming from Gizmo. They want to make sure that basically Awake are just forced to defend all lanes continuously. Got top lane being pressured out quite a bit. Bottom lane in a decent position though. And as a result, well, that's what we're seeing. Gizmo. Just farming safely on their side of the map. Forty for them, that means Roshan once again going to go the way of Awake. Awake bring down Roshan, Aegis once again to Toy on the uh, Phantom Lancer. And maybe soon we look for another push coming out from them. Oh, Mana Leak onto Melody. That's not going to be too much fun for him, it forced him to hold his ground. As a Toy's top. Oh, ZGL forced to prop that Shadow Blade, they still haven't got vision of him. Well they, well, they will if Brewmaster's there. He's the one here they need. He's got the detection. And with Nature's Prophet being revealed top, maybe they'll look to engage me, but the thing is, the beauty of that Nature's Prophet is he can be anywhere at any time. Oh, Lena. Lena's going to be caught by the Brumas. That should be a deadly. We'll take a look at this mid-fight, though. DK pops the ultimate for Nature's Prophet. TP in. They're going to try to bring down Boombell. 
Brimbell needs to pop this winner and gonna force up away. Will keep himself alive. Phantom Lancer help finish off the mag and DK just trying to man fight his way out of this one. PL stunned up by a DK side. Oh Melody. That BKB did not last long enough. Four heroes now down for a wake. I didn't catch the Lena falling, but you can only guess what happened there. I saw the Brewmaster split right on top of the Lena. Brewmaster with a level three ultimate and an Ag Scepter. There's no surviving that if you're Lena. No Ghost Scepter, no Force Up. It's a Blink Dagger. And Blink Dagger, you can't escape away from the Brewmaster once he's, once he's counted your Blink. And a tier three tower gonna go down. Awake now find themselves pounding away on Raxes with three heroes dead. Arthi wasn't even used, but the problem is, Rax is already going to be down by the time these heroes respawn. Mag down on the sideline for 20 more seconds. And this is trouble for Gizmo. The Malaysian team are finding themselves behind now with their back against the wall, up against their tie opponents away. The Heart Manta style diffuser blade of the PL. He's still got an Ages of the Mortal Wells, and it looks like they're going to get tier 3 bottom tower out of this. Nathan's Robert doing his best to solve. Mag will respawn now. DBA gonna get disrupted out there. There's a lot of first zones being thrown away and then forced out the way. It's gonna be enough team alive. It looks like it may just be. Where's the mag? RP only catches two. Rubik as well as PL and PL not really worth killing because of this Aegis. Only the Aegis being used here and PL's just gonna respawn and fight his way out of this one. RP on cooldown now. And with RP on cooldown, T3 tower goes down. Rax is most likely gonna go down. Both the mid Raxes went down. The melee as well as the range Raxes. And these bottom Raxes both vulnerable now. DBA, we saw that ultimate happen at mid lane, so you, it's going to be coming up in the next 20 30 seconds as well. So, awake, they get the melee racks, they back off. Mag, blink, he's got a skewer, but he hasn't got an RP. He already used that just not long ago. Disruption, and then the mag trying to keep him alive. He's going to be Boombell forced out, out of there, gets himself out of the sprout. Peel in the front line, this is not a hero that they can really fight. Had they got the damage to bring him down, the mech is there from the keep light. Rubik's the only one to take it for. ZGL, Nexus Prophet, isn't going to be able to escape that one. The vision is there from the Brewmaster Gem, I believe. Brewmaster selects and finding 200 HP is all he needs. He's got, uh oh, look what he's got as well. This is going to be a dead Rax here. As PL. <laughs> Cheeky little recall. Gets moved about two feet there. Buyback coming up from the winner after dropping to a Shadow Demon, and this is suddenly looking very, very grim for Gizmo. Two lanes of Raxes are down, and they're going to start pelting away on the tier 4 towers. PL lost an Aegis for that, but hey. A well worthwhile trade. Brewmaster Ultimate. Just to bring down these tier 4 towers faster. That's what I was talking about. We're looking at Brewmaster with his ultimate back online. Tier 4 towers dropping. And look at the three heroes who are dead. Mag, DK, Nature's Prophet. No one with a buyback. And this is going to be tier 4 towers. And it looks like the throne. No one can defend this. It's just two supports. And one of those supports is flying up in the air. Tornadoed up by the, snake, by the Brewmaster Ultimate. And the GG is going to be called Gizmo aren't defeated here in your winner bracket quarterfinal. It's a way to come out on top. And they do so in a pretty decisive back day. It was very close for a long, long time, but one team fight went the way of Awake, and then they followed up with a mid rack. They followed up with a bottom rack. It was the Brewmaster who blinked in, initiated on Lena, while the rest of his team took out the other heroes. PL, once he got up the heart, set up those big team fights. So, guys, we're here live in Singapore with the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. I'm God from Beyond the Summit. Thanks everyone for tuning in on the live stream as well as here live in Singapore. We'll be back soon with more live action of this fantastic event.